Okay, so this is this week's uh, JHR Threads. Uh, we're going to be, I'm Scott Cunningham, uh, Associate Editor of Research Impact at the Journal of Human Resources. And today I have Einstein Hannes, uh, who is going to talk to us about his study, Television, Cognitive Ability, and High School Completion with Simon Markison and Newt Road. Could you tell us a little bit about where you are right now and uh, where you work? Yeah, I'm in um, in Norway. I work at the, I was a researcher at the Prish Center. It's a research institute in Norway, uh, doing a lot of uh, labor, educational, uh, economics stuff, um, based on Norwegian registered data often. Mm. As this uh, study is uh, as well. Okay. Uh, the, so the famous uh, Norwegian administrative data where you have, can you tell us a little bit about what, what, what makes that data so special? Yeah, it's that we have very good records of the whole uh, population for uh, um, several uh, variables uh, in the labor and the, the labor market and the education mm. for some years back in time. This is a really, this is a really fascinating study. It was a little uh, d discouraging. Some of the findings that we're going to talk about were less than, uh, uh, they were exciting but discouraging at the same time and so I'm looking forward to kind of digging into it. <clears throat> I was wondering if you could tell me um, a little bit about this uh, event that occurred in Norway where uh, cable television sort of expanded around the country. Yeah, in the television, television as such was introduced in the um, 1960s and then for about 20 years the state broadcaster held a legal monopoly on uh, broadcasting television signals. The, in, in 1981, they suddenly announced that um, the um, state broadcaster's legal monopoly would go, was going to end, and they like, gave licenses to um, to a lot of other uh, agents as well. That set off a huge expansion of uh, these networks uh, all across uh, the country. And um, yeah, I think that was start of it at least when when the uh, monopoly was uh, relaxed and and there were these new networks that were brought in was it mainly Norwegian uh, television or was it European television or American television that was being sort of distributed around the country no they were they were um, Norwegian or Scandinavian but a lot of the programming was uh, American so whereas before the uh, state broadcaster uh, uh, of many was regarded as uh, a little boring and they had a very clear educational mandate uh, and um, a serious uh, profile. These new channels, um, they were dominated by uh, by sort of more light entertainment. Mm. And they uh, had shows, uh, popular game shows and such uh, in Norwegian and a lot of um, American television series. So the, the concern that critics have had, like Neil Postman, uh, who you cite in the book in the paper? The concern was that uh, this television consumption was crowding out was crowding out other kinds of activities. Is that the that might have end up harming the, uh, the the intellectual maturity of of young people? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's a traditional concern. Okay, and, um, that's one thing that we wanted to uh, investigate. Actually, when starting this project, I was more on the other camp that. Uh, that I think we also um, list um, some people that argue that uh, popular culture has become more complex and demanding. So yeah. I was hoping that uh, this um, technological development had positive effects. Right. Um, so you've got these two outcomes. One is basically sort of like an IQ measure. It's a measure of ability. And the other is completing high school. Yeah. So what do you end up finding? We end up finding that um, for the uh, for the men from whom we have the uh, ability test score, we find a reduction, a very small reduction, but the reduction nevertheless. And we also find a, a larger actually um, reduction in the high school completion rate at twenty one. Mm. For uh, women, we don't find this. Uh, we all ha only have the high school completion rate. Yeah. Uh, there, we don't find any ne negative effects. How big are these effects on ability? 
one year of uh, living in a municipality with full coverage of te cable television during childhood and adolescence up to 18. We find that it lowers the test score by um, around 0 0.2 IQ points. Mm. That's very small. Okay. But that's only one year. Mm. So if you add that up, it becomes um, quite a bit uh, larger. Yeah. And, uh, but um, in any case, I think it's more credible that it would be a fairly small effect because this is only from the coverage in, uh, in your whole municipality. So we don't know exactly, yeah. exactly how much it impacts uh, viewing. Right, right. Right. For uh, high school, yeah. we find that uh, this same one year of uh, exposure reduces uh, the completion rate by 1.4 percentage points. Yes. But at least suggestive evidence of what these uh, channels actually broadcast mm. is that they were, it was a very light entertainment mm. and uh, it's, it's, it's not um, demanding in, uh, in any way. And when we try to look at survey data, we find that in this period, people, in, young, uh, young people increased their um, television consumption a lot. They reduced, uh, in particular, their reading yeah. a lot. And we speculate that uh, these uh, things go together, that uh, more television watching displaced reading. So it's all about, <clears throat> I mean, I guess the, I don't want to overstay this, but I, what I hear you saying is there's basically two things that could be going on. Something harmful about the content, which I think is what a lot of people outside of economics, or at least like at the popular level, when they worry about television or media, they're thinking mainly about the content. They're just thinking, this is what this is. It's a, it's a violent show or it's whatever but you're really emphasizing it, it may be the content, but what you're thinking really is it's this crowding out of reading. Yeah, actually I think a lot of people also think about their crowding out, but they're not really clear about, um, about the, these differences. I was wondering if you could walk us through why you think that these correlations really are causal. And so I'll start with one thing. <clears throat> Maybe what's going on uh, is you've got these areas that are getting um, that are getting uh, te new television content, and you're watching people with lower IQ moving into those areas, and it's just simply spurious. It seems like you thought very carefully about that, and you had and you tried to to test whether that could be going on. And I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about how you're handling those kinds of selection problems. So for one thing, those, if there was selection in where people um, lived, it um, would ha have to take place very, very early because uh, what we um, take as a starting point, we use only um, the municipality where, where, you, where you're uh, born. That's one thing that we do. do. And also we um, look at changes within families, right. from your so-called family fixed effects. Yeah. And we use two uh, complementary strategies to think about these uh, effects or these, um, or, uh, for why, uh, to try to find out whether these uh, correlations are actually causal. Yeah. And the, the second one was uh, analyzing changes um, or differences within families. Right, right. So that's really, I thought that one was the most interesting. I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about that. So what does that mean? That mean with family, for reader, for listeners that don't know what your a family fixed effect strategy would mean, are you saying that your estimates are comparing siblings? Yes. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? In this case, it's, it's compare, primarily comparing brothers. Mm. So we're comparing one brother to the other and um, they, they would have uh, a different exposure to, uh, to cable uh, television because they're not born at the same time. And as the cable uh, coverage um, 
was expanding a lot in this period. There would typically be an uh, increase in um, um, in the experience coverage. So younger brothers would tend to have be exposed a lot more, but brothers they uh, would have a lot of the same family background characteristics. They would obviously have the same parents, and the characteristics with the parents would uh, be the same. And um, we also have many areas that don't see a lot of a change in the coverage. Mm -hmm. So then the, um, uh, the exposure of these brothers to cable television will be quite, uh, quite similar. Mm -hmm. And that's also important because then, then that allows us to, uh, to uh, control for the um, differences in sibling uh, order. Mm -hmm. So whether there are systematic differences in uh, how well brothers, younger or older elder brothers do uh, in school. You also are finding, a f I thought one of the things that was interesting was um, if I was just to be thinking, you know, at this point, you telling me I'm finding declines in ability, I'm finding declines in high school completion. And if you were to say, well, who do you think this is affecting? I would think, well, this is probably affecting low socioeconomic status people. Uh, that would be my, my gut. I would just think uh, the kinds of people being affected by this media content are like poorer families. That's not quite the story that you're finding. Is that right? What we found was that uh, the negative um, effects was actually larger in, uh, for boys from more uh, advantaged backgrounds. Mm. And after a while, we, we can just think about, it, about uh, this as uh, quite reasonable because if it all depends on what, um, what the new activity crowds out, it does make sense that um, it would crowd out more cognitively valuable activities in families with uh, where the parents have a higher education right. are more generally more resourceful. So you saw this finding as actually maybe more evidence that this was a crowding out story. Yeah, we did. Yeah, right. Because it's because if if it's just the content, it sort of is affecting all of the people the same. But if this higher SEA, higher socioeconomic status people are the ones engaging in those productive activities, you might see it amongst them in the first place. Is yeah. That right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Well, uh, thanks so much for doing this interview with me. I'm glad that we were, after many weeks, finally able to uh, hook up with each other. Yeah, I'm too. Thanks okay. for having me.